Hello, it's Cooper and Sarah. When we made the decision to move back to the United Kingdom after spending more than two and a half years in Australia, there was no way we were going to leave behind our little two-year-old Westie in London. So the answer to the question, is it really easy to relocate a puppy from Australia to the other side of the world? Well, if you want the honest answer, no. no. It's really expensive and there's a lot of planning, preparation and stress involved. Mm. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to transport a pet from Australia to the UK. But before we go on, we are Sarah and Cooper from TravelLiveLearn.com or YouTube.com TravelLiveLearn. We talk a lot about gathering a freedom through travel, um, creative living and remote working. If you have that kind of adventure on your horizon, do subscribe for more details. We're gonna show you step by step the process when it comes to relocating a pet internationally. We've broken it up into five pieces. The first one is to make contact with your local vet. Uh, London's been going to the same vet since we had him as a puppy, and it's really important why, Sarah. Well, um, and I, we have to give Kirsty and the team at Tawong Family Vet a shout out because they are awesome. Hopefully you, you have a local vet, but even better if you have a trusted vet like mm. we did. It's really important, you need to make sure that your dog is able to make that journey. Yes. We're not the experts on that. We wanted to talk to Kirsty, um, who has known London since he was a baby. Our first step was to book a consultation with her to have a chat about this opportunity and to get her to um, A, have a look at London to see what, and London's just, I don't know if you can hear that banging in the background where he's walked through his dog door, he's left us here by the way. Check to make sure London is in good health, um, that he is generally fine to travel. So that was the one part of the conversation we wanted to have with Kirsty. The other part of the conversation, as I'm sure you can anticipate, is the flight. Now, it's an extremely long way. He's never been on a plane before. So we wanted to talk to Kirsty about um, what the process is for getting a dog prepared to fly, but also to have a bit of a chat about um, assessing if London might be an anxious flyer, and also to talk about the options around, um, so you may or may not know that you can no longer sedate dogs when they're flying. It the reason for this is when dogs yeah. are sleeping they don't drink water and they become dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And I was also mm -hmm. reading that they can like flop around and potentially hurt themselves if they're a bit out of it. So there's no sedation but there's potentially the option to talk to your vet about um, a program of um, anti-anxiety medication that leads up to the flight and then once you're in your destination and, and they maybe like are adjusting to the change once that's that you're through that period to taper um, your puppy dog off but that's entirely your choice um, and to talk to your vet about those options. Okay step two is choosing a pet carrier an accredited pet carrier to transport your dog from Australia to England. In Australia there's a few key ones they include um, Jet Pets, Aero Pets and Pet Traveller. Um, oftentimes your vet will have a favourite um, provider and we had a couple recommended to us but we did our own independent research and um, looked at the websites, looked at the reviews, reviews. Um, and we have decided to work with Pet Traveller. The reason for this one for us, our personal decision, um, in, in our conversations with um, all the carriers, so we, we sent messages to the, the main ones, we got quotes back. The quotes are pretty much all similar. Um, we preferred the itinerary for this one. Now, London isn't able to fly direct from, from Brisbane to London. Obviously, if you can get a direct flight, that is much preferred. Mm. But with London, his are going to be broken up. He'll be doing a stopover in Dubai, mm. which means he gets a comfort break. And a comfort break is where they go to a pet hotel, they're taken out of their crate, um, they're fed, watered, are taken for a walk. Um, the dog's clean and the crate's clean, if it needs to be. But we were quite surprised to find that some of the um, companies weren't giving the dogs a comfort break, they were just sort of leaving them in the cage during transit and then they just put them on another plane and then send them straight off to the United Kingdom. And I Kingdom. guess, just to clarify though, some of that's beyond the company's control. Um, it depends what country they're landing mm. in. Um, and 
it's not like a representative from the pet carriers are with your dog the whole time. They are working with partners, you know, in yes. <clears throat> Singapore, Qatar, um, Dubai, wherever the puppy dogs end up or your cats or um, whatever you are transporting. For us, it was a personal preference, um, as, as Cooper was saying, to um, maybe take a slower route, but go the route where um, London is not left somewhere in storage or hold or whatever the airline term is mm. um the the route so he will be picked up in brisbane he will go to sydney um for a, a pet uh, sorry Medical. a vet check yep. <laughs> a final vet check um then they fly to dubai i believe there is a custom built pet hotel at the dubai airport which is one of the reasons why this is a a nice route but yeah gets out of the crate most importantly um before taking his next journey and they're only in the crate when they're being transported to the plane in the plane and when they land and they're taken straight out of the crate which is really really important yes yes because it's it's long enough as it is and it has caused some tears for us <laughs> thinking about it okay step number three when you've chosen your pet carrier it's important that you consult with them ask a lot of questions and find out what the actual process is involved and we expect that all the carriers are pretty much the same yes give you full details on what you need to do in terms of um, arranging the crate for your um, little bubba to be um, transported in, um, time frames for, for when you need to do various things like get vaccines or health checks, um, and also they'll advise on, on the process for applying for a spot on the airline. Um, unfortunately now, your dog or cat or your pet um, can't necessarily be on the same no. flight with you. So no. the process that, that we've been talked through. So we have been told that it's around the 15th of each month where these airline applications get put through to the airline. So today, London's um, application will be sent off to um, via Pet Traveller to the airlines to find out um, where he might be able to be slotted in for his trip. Now, as part of the application that they talked us through, we had to give a date range. So we've given about um, seven, a seven day date range in February for when ideally he could fly. We don't find out until basically no. the last week of this month, and it's the same for every month that you might be applying for, what flight or flights that he's been, he's been booked onto but you're encouraged to have a backup plan for where your pet can stay if you have to fly first, or if your pet gets to the destination before you, who is going to look after him or her. So your pet um, carrier will talk you through this whole process, um, and we are actually still going through it in terms of um, airline application and finding out when Little London will be on a flight to the UK. Okay, step number four, which is crucial, your dog cannot fly yeah. unless it has a rabies vaccination. And there are only a certain uh, number of vets who are accredited to do this. The advice given to us was basically, if you're thinking about going at all, um, just get the rabies vaccine when it's they're available. they're valid for two years, aren't I they? think so, yeah. yeah, I think so. Because we had, um, again, a bit of a, well, quite a huge panic. <laughs> Because like last year? Australia-wide, we couldn't believe it. Mm. There was a rabies vaccine shortage. And yeah. we phoned up a lot of the vets uh, around Brisbane, um, the Gold Coast, Toowoomba, all in our area, and they all had the same answer. They were still waiting for the supply to come in. The airline application that we were just talking about before, that that is unable to progress until mm. you present the um, rabies vaccine um, certificate. We were, you know, so grateful when the vet here um, gave us a call to say, hey, you're good. Um, so we rushed to London over for his rabies vaccine and we were good to go. But yeah, get on those lists early. That is one thing you really need to crack on with. And finally, step number five, crate train your dog. Now, Pet Traveller or the company you've chosen, they'll send you a crate for the specific size of your dog. Unfortunately for us, we were sent a crate, but our little dog, London, within decided the six grow. week period, decided to grow. Because you've got to send photos to Pet Traveller, who then send those photos to the airline, mm -hmm. and they decide whether or not um, that is big enough for your mm -hmm. dog. Unfortunately, ours wasn't, so we had to get another one sent to him. But remember, your dog's going to spend a long time in that crate so you need to make sure that they are comfortable so 
At first, we weren't worried about this because London, we crate trained London when he was a puppy. He always used to go he into his it. crate. It was his yeah. little cave, happy cave. Um, for some reason, he doesn't seem to love the new crate as much as he did his original crate mm. from when he was a baby. I don't know, I mean, he'd had that other crate, it was it was nice and roomy and he'd had it ever since he was a baby. So we don't know what the difference is, but we've done, you know, we've done everything. We've put his bed in there. We do notice that he's much happier in there with his actual usual, like, um, anxiety, fluffy bed that kind of, like, is that sort of material. But it's pink. <laughs> It's pink, that's my doing. He goes in there to sleep when we put his bed in there. Um, we had a huge wake up call, didn't we, about um, four weeks ago when we tried. So he was he was sleeping in there, he was completely fine. He was fine, yes. We decided to shut the door overnight just to, you know, get him used to it. He didn't like that. No. Um, he slept in there and he was fine, but he like barged out when we opened the door in the morning. But then when we tried to pop him in that evening, he wasn't having a bar of it, so there were tears from me. And I'm like, oh, he's never gonna go in. We can't force him, he's gonna, you know, he's not happy in there. But we slowly started to work with him. We'd leave little treats in there, so he'd go in yep. by himself to find a nice surprise. At night, he is sleeping in there yeah, by himself. Yeah, he's happy to go in there. And during yep. the day, just to get London used to the fact that he's gonna be in a crate, he's gonna be in foreign surroundings. Pet travelers will pick him up, take him to the airport. So we put the crate in the back of the car, and then we go for drives. We start off with a short drive first, and make the drives a bit longer but at the end of each um, drive we always make sure there's something special for London yeah. we might go to a park or a beach and Play he always knows that puppy. when he gets out there's something fun there the lovely vet that we were talking about earlier Kirsty she um, and her team at Tuong mm. Family Vet actually went to um, a, a workshop earlier this year where they were talking a lot about this exact situation and so she called us after she she talked yeah. to the experts in this area and said gradually move the crate to different modes of transport so start in your car take them for short rides then try and um, lengthen uh, extend the length of time um, so I think Co oh, Cooper <laughs> London's been on drives for about an hour an hour and a half mm. um, but then like three or four hours all up on a day the next part we're going to hire a van yes and they're going to put him noisier. in the back of the van mm. so it's a bit noisier and it's very similar to the pet travel van who picked them up now we saw one of the pet travelers pick up a dog um, at a cafe just opposite where we live, they had the air conditioning on, and I said, oh, where's the dog going, mate? And he says, off to Singapore. A shorter trip for, for that little yes. puppy, lucky him. The other piece of advice, if you have the opportunity, which um, the vet had given us is, if possible, um, to do the same process with the crate in a, in a vehicle, but with friends or family members, so that um, your dog can get used to the fact that even if he goes in a crate, he or she goes in the crate with someone else in the car or driving, you're on the other end, which is what will eventually happen when we yes. all are reunited in the UK. <laughs> Keep an eye out for part two. Uh, we will cover the journey and let you know what the outcome is. Um, we, will, we are eagerly awaiting, um, you know, the outcome as well so we will share that with you and i apologize there may be tears before he leaves There's and upon the arrival to be tears. yeah if you found this video helpful please make sure you hit the subscribe like and notification button